It's April 1943 in San Pedro, California. Todd Shipyards begins laying the keel on a Currituck Class seaplane tender originally named the Puget Sound. In June, the name would be changed to the Salisbury Sound. On September the 2nd, 1945, Japan surrenders on board the USS Missouri. Just two months later, on the 26th of November, Mrs. John Price commissions the seaplane tender USS Salisbury Sound. With Captain Doyle Donahoe as her first captain, In February of 1946, after a brief shakedown in San Diego, the Salisbury Sound gets underway for the first of her 19 deployments to the Western Pacific. I was dancing with my darling Capable of supporting two 15-plane squadrons of the Mariner type, both in material upkeep, repair, and personnel subsistence, the Sally's facilities included engine, hydraulic, and carburetor repair. Say, what do you guys down there throw me up a monkey wrench? Along with a metal, parachute, and photographic shop. In addition to her own 684 officers and crew, she could billet over 120 squadron officers and 200 crew members. Her most striking feature was her large afterdeck, where two huge seaplanes could be hoisted aboard and serviced at the same time. Her hospital ward was fitted with 18 beds, and a larger number could be made available in the event of an emergency. High-speed boats could be lowered over her sides by cranes and dispatched to refuel planes or boats at sea, and if necessary, tow them to safety. Supplies, trained mechanics, and medical rescue teams were on constant standby, ready to be flown over vast ocean reaches and parachuted in to bring immediate relief to planes or vessels in distress. While Sally's primary duties were to provide tender services to seaplane squadrons, here on the 6th of January, 1951, she supports anti-submarine warfare training with Seaplane Air Search and Attack Unit Patrol Squadron 46 and Fleet Submarine Basugo SS-321. On the 16th of January, Sally resumed her daily direction of reconnaissance flights and tender services. In between refueling seaplanes, replacing carburetors, and checking the depth of your fathoms, what better way to utilize a sailor's spare time than with a good old-fashioned personnel inspection? Here, Captain F.R. Francis Jones checks out Sally's sailors to ensure everyone is having a good time. Not to mention that each one has a keen understanding of the phrase Respect your brasso. Continuously training and performing battle exercises to simulate every possible situation, here, Sally's gunnery crews demonstrate to Army and Air Force observers they do indeed have what it takes to hit more than the broadside of a barn.
That's some fine shooting, boys. That ought to show them fellas from the Army and the Air Force they ain't the only ones who know how to look down a barrel. I don't think that flying rag is going to give us any more trouble. An extra ration of rum for everyone tonight. Hurry, get rid of this thing before the captain wants to start shooting again. It's June 1966. With the war in South Vietnam escalating, the Navy assigns P-5 Marlin seaplanes the crucial task of providing coastal reconnaissance patrols. To support these essential efforts, the Salisbury Sound sets up a sea drome in the quiet waters of the Bay of Cam Ranh, one of the jewels of South Vietnam. There, the Sally provides tender services to the last of the Navy's seaplane squadrons. This is the end. With flight operations requiring a constant vigil on the weather, here, Petty Officer First Class Glenn from OA Division releases a weather observation balloon. While these two sailors record surface temperature, wind speed, and direction, Just as in 1951, Sally carries on her tradition of being the mothership. We can work it out. Here, a P-5 Marlin is gently ushered up to Sally's large fantail crane, where the seaplane is hoisted aboard for repairs and maintenance. Circling nearby in case of an emergency is one of Sally's two crash and rescue boats. Every available sailor in the air department grabs a line to give a hand. I distinctly said three seats on the inside over the wing. Precision crane operation is required to gently lower the P-5 into position to have her main deck wheels attached. And finally, the tail wheel gets attached. Monday, Monday. Can't trust that day. With the P-5 safely on the deck, Sally's sailors return to their regular duty stations. In preparation for what will soon become an extinct form of flight for the Navy, Sally's second crash and rescue boat stands by for takeoff of a P-5M seaplane. While the seaplane finishes its pre-flight checklist and taxis into position for takeoff, in the Flight Operations Center, final mission instructions are issued. Along with plotting course changes to the flight plan. With the Sally tendering her last seaplane squadron in October in Cameron Bay.
an unrivaled chapter in naval history would come to a close. On the 5th of November, the Sally will pull out of Buckner Bay, Okinawa and chart a course for her final voyage home. On the 31st of March, 1967, the Sally is decommissioned and joins the reserve fleet, ending a unique and illustrious 21-year career.